Perfect. Okay. So for this problem, it does look a little hard. And what we have to do is, is our properties of logarithms, right? It just over and over and over, they keep on coming back to us. So now, just like when I say solve for x, right? You have to only have one x. Well, if we have multiple logarithms, guys, that's going to affect us, guys. Uh, that's going to affect us being able to solve for this logarithm. So I need a way to condense these two logarithms into one single logarithm. Since I see addition, I know I can rewrite this as now a multiplication problem. Okay? Then you guys can do this two different ways. You can now raise this or exponentiate as the base of 3 on both sides, or you can transfer this to logarith or to exponential form. Doesn't really matter which way you do it. Whenever it's, I, you weren't here, so you, you missed out on this, but the property logarithm states whenever you have two separate logarithms with the same base and you're adding them, you can rewrite them as a single logarithm with that base, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and then if I was write this, 3 squared Right? Just did it two different ways. Here I used the one to one property and the inverse property. Here I just switched it to logarithmic to exponential. Okay? You guys just need to understand both of them. Yes? Yep, I'm going to try working both sides left and right. So um, when you guys look at this, now what you're going to have to do is factor this through. So you get 3 squared equals x squared minus 8. Or I'm sorry, minus 8x. All right? Now, the important thing when you guys look at this is, now I have an x squared term, right? And whenever we solve with x squared terms, we had to look at factoring. So therefore, I'm either going to be caught up with a factoring problem, or I'm going to have to factor by completing the square, or I can use quadratic formula. Those are your three options we have, right? Okay, and we're not, I'm not going to deal with talk about graphing or anything like that, but those are three algebraic methods we've talked so far about. So first of all, to get this to factor, I need to set it equal to 0. So 3 squared is equal to 9. All right. So then what I'm going to do from here is subtract my 9. And I get 0 equals x squared minus 8x minus 9. So I, first of all, I always want to see, can I factor this? Yes. And I want to see, can I factor it as, um, I'm sorry, uh, I want to see if I can factor this as it's set equal to zero. So what I say is I look at this, and I'm just going to continue the problem over here. I ran out of space. So I can rewrite this as zero equals x minus nine and x plus one. Right? The factored form of that. And then since I set it equal to zero, I can use the zero prime property saying that now Zero is equal to x minus nine, and zero is equal to x plus one. Therefore, x equals nine, and x equals a negative one. Right? Right, correct. Okay, so the last thing we need to talk about is extraneous solutions, solutions that don't work. Now, whenever you guys are solving for logs, you're going to want to remember when you guys first learned how to like solve equations, you plug your answer back in and double check to make sure, right? It's the same thing with logarithms because what we do have in logarithms is sometimes extraneous solutions, meaning you've solved the answer, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's a solution to your function. So let's look at the paragraph. Solutions, but not all right. Solutions, not solutions to the function. Okay? They actually don't, you know, part of the function. If you guys look at here's my regular parent graph, right? Is there any negative, do any nec uh, negative x values are evaluated for our function? No. Are they part of our domain? No. No, right? So, so therefore, well, hold on, it doesn't necessarily mean this function has been manipulated, right? This is x and this is x minus 8. Well, what you're going to do is just because you see a negative number doesn't mean it's not part of your function part of your function. You need to plug it back into your equation and see if you'll get a negative value. So if I plug in at negative 1 in for x, do I get a negative log? Uh, yes. And try to plug that in your calculator and you will, you'll get a syntax error. You can't calculate a negative log. Same thing over here. Negative 1 minus 8 is a negative 9. You can't calculate 
log base 3 of negative 9. So therefore, that is not a solution. Your only solution to your function is x is equal to 9. Okay? All right? So make sure you guys plug those in. And if you guys would actually um, subtract a 2 and then graph this, you would notice that negative 1 is not part of your domain. Yes? How did you know that's what the graph is Like, how did you know it couldn't be? I did, well, no, what I'm saying is this is just the parent graph. And I was saying in logarithms in general, we don't have any x values. Our, our, when x is negative, there's no, this is, negative x values are not part of your range, right? Are not part of your domain. So therefore, all I'm saying is um, I don't know what this graph looks like. Okay, you can subtract two and then graph it and see what it looks like. But what I'm saying is you can't evaluate for a negative logarithm. So when I plug in my answers, I have to make sure that answer is going to be positive. If it's not positive, then it's not part of my logarithm. Okay? That's it.